Court TV Live. I'm Michael Ayala here with Judge Ashley Wilcott, and we have breaking news coming into the Court TV newsroom just literally as we speak. The Santa Fe, New Mexico prosecutor is dropping the gun enhancement charge against actor Alec Baldwin in the Rust movie shooting. And I know it's breaking news, meaning we're all looking through all the information. Exactly. Here's what we can tell you. This means with this change, Baldwin might not spend any time behind bars, whereas if he'd been convicted of the gun charge, it would have been five years behind bars. Yes, and I think at the bottom the bottom line with the dropping of this charge, it's twofold. First and foremost, the, the enhancement, which gets added on to the involuntary manslaughter charge, it's not a charge in and of itself, it's an add-on. Right. Wasn't in existence uh, until about five or six, was it seven months? Seven after months after the, the incident. actual incident. The second part is the enhancement requires the brandishing of a, of a gun for intimidation purposes. Clearly that wasn't the case here. They were on a movie set. He brandished the gun as part of the scene. Right. It wasn't for a robbery or to try to intimidate anyone. Right. And I think that the at the time of the incident, the law said it had to be brandished and there was no threat because he was on set. Seven months after that, New Mexico changed their law to say it doesn't have to be brandished, but it's after the fact. So okay. I think legally the right thing because the state, I don't think, could have proceeded, but we also have with us to talk through this criminal defense attorneys Jack Rice and Josh Schiffer. All right, Jack, I don't think that the law allowed for the gun enhancement. However, for a prosecutor to say, okay, it's not allowed, we're going to drop that, really is not always what we see happen. Oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, the fact that they added this on in the first place, let's consider the law was actually changed subsequently, and then you actually apply it to him. That's not really how things work. But this actually changes everything dramatically because now all of a sudden, what we saw before was a potential five-year mandatory commit. What that means, you go to trial in a case like this and you go down, you do five years. The difference now is that Al Alec Baldwin has the potential here, even if he goes to trial, to cap out at 18 months. But it also drives the prosecution, which means what you have the ability to do is drive them into a settlement which could result in probation. And the judge has the absolute right to do that. It simply changes the entire tenor of how the prosecution can handle this case. So it's much bigger than the five-year question. It's everything that follows after the fact. And before, I know you may have a response to mm -hmm. that, but I have to point out that also the defense filed a motion to get rid of the gun enhancement. That's they didn't it. do it Not on their the gun own. enhancement, but the prosecutor as well. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the the prosecutor that, as well. you're right. And, and, and I want to bring in Josh because he and I often talk about your overzealous prosecutions, and that's kind of what this looks like here. I want to know what your thoughts are on the politics of it all. The fact that a prosecutor could look at this change, look at this particular law, and think from the very beginning that it applied to this case boggles my mind, Josh. I, yeah, I'm 100% with you on that. This was a prosecutor saving face before taking a boot up the rear <laughs> in some sort of court of appeals or in front of a judge. <laughs> they tried to apply a law after it had changed in its new form. That it's fully against all of our traditions. You're not allowed to make up a law to use on a case uh, you know, almost as revenge, ipso post facto, that kind of stuff. What I think is fascinating, going back to what Jack's bringing up, is how this change really drives the rest of the case. Prosecutors have enormous discretion in combination with enormous responsibility to fulfill their oath. They have to prosecute cases, but the strategy and motivation behind each individual case changes, and it reflects not just the need of the community and the demand of the mandate of election, but also the intangibles, like the efficiency of our system overall, the process, how any civil claims fit in. And their obligation as the state is to do justice by taking this away Justice is going to be done a lot more smoothly, and I won't be surprised if, as Jack's alluding to, there's some sort of aggressive negotiation that results in a disposition of this case where Mr. Baldwin doesn't go to jail for one day. It takes into account what the victims had to deal with, and everybody goes away and the prosecutor gets reelected. 
rather than getting a bench slap for doing something no one else thought was a good idea. That's what I was going to say. It drives the case. As a former judge, let me give you that perspective. None of you are going to be surprised when I say the last thing a judge wants is to get something in front of it that once you look at the law and, and delve into it, you say, what are you doing? This isn't even applicable, state. Why is this in front of me? This should have been resolved. So I think it also drives the case in a very smart way. You don't want to bring this before a judge. Mm -mm, no, you don't. And I think at the end of the day, what this has done, Jack, is I agree with you, because we already know that the assistant director has pled out and got probation, which you could argue he might have been the most culpable of everybody. So I was surprised that he got a deal. I don't. I think with this change, the chances of a trial now have, are slim and none, and, and Slim just left town. Yeah, absolutely, Michael. When we think about the plea that's already come in and we look about culpability, responsibility, it's that middleman who is supposed to be the last person to say, this is a safe uh, prop, hand it to the actor. The idea that he pled, and then all of a sudden you're gonna say, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna treat the person who may be less culpable more aggressively. Why is that? And you could certainly make arguments on the edges that, you know what, are you doing this, Mr. Prosecutor, because you're pandering to the press, you're pandering to the public, you're pandering for your next election. What's really going on here if we're talking about equanimity, about equality, about treating people fairly and I think the, the dismissal of this one charge makes those arguments potentially even stronger. Even stronger. Josh, any coincidence or not that this announcement came out on a holiday, a federal holiday, President's Day? It's not like everybody's necessarily paying attention to all of the breaking news today. What do you think, Josh? Uh I, I can go get the uh, conspiracy kitties there in the other room because you're absolutely right. When we look at the news cycle and how information comes out, there's very specific reasons as to how and why these kind of announcements get made. It also comes immediately on the heels of action from the plaintiff's attorney's side. And it, as it, I know it doesn't surprise anybody, the decedent's family is represented by some pretty big hitters out of California who are definitely in daily contact with the DA's office. They need a resolution that's gonna benefit the civil process and avoiding a trial that's probably gonna assist that civil process big time, especially if they can slide in and get some sort of acknowledgement of responsibility. That's where the big money comes in and, and it, it matters. Yeah, and, and I think Alec, you know, I think he's taking responsibility financially. He'll yeah. be okay with that. Yeah. Not sure he deserves criminal responsibility here.